Garen, the second game of the weekend is more the game everyone's talking about this morning. It was the Sharks versus the Highlanders. The Sharks took it at home. Why don't you take us through that game? Absolutely. Now, I think the Sharks would have had a bit of a wake-up call, and certainly a half-time tongue-lashing from Jake White. You know, we expected them to win fairly comfortably. Mm -hmm. The Highlanders also having played not great rugby heading into the playoffs. They had two heavy defeats. But they had beaten the Sharks in Durban in the preseason or in, in the group phase of the tournament. So they had happy memories of, of Durban and they actually led at half time, which I think shocked pretty much everyone, including the Sharks, the commentators in studio, Twitter. Everyone was quite surprised that the, Sh that the Sharks were four points behind um, at half time. Mm -hmm. But they came out in the second half, played a lot better rugby, ended up winning by four points. There were a couple of controversial moments in, in the match, talking points on Twitter today, um, tries, should they have been allowed or not, you know, but like everyone says, the score's in the history books and, and there's nothing to change that now, so the Sharks heading off to the semi-finals. I think they'll be a little bit worried um, the way they played, you know, they, they dominated the scrum and, and, and the line-out in the set phases, but they, they weren't that flash outside mm -hmm. of, of those two areas, so they'll have a lot to work on this week. Obviously, they have to ma now make the, the long journey to, to Christchurch, where South African teams don't have a fantastic right. record. So, you know, the, the bookies for, for sure will have the Crusaders as favourites for that for that match. Um, but at least South Africa have some representation in, in the semi-finals. You know, we've got two Australian teams, one New Zealand, one South African. It would be very sad had we not had anyone in the semi-finals. So mm -hmm. hats off to the Sharks. They've been the standout South African team in this tournament, and they probably deserve their spot in the semi-final. Robert, what was your take on the game? Well, thank goodness they just threw, Jen. That was the main thing. Um, uh, I think a lot of us expected them to win a lot more easily and that they might have absorbed some of the lessons uh, from the, the previous game against the mm -hmm. Highlanders at Kings Park just a few weeks earlier uh, where they got uh, quite unceremoniously beaten and we all thought that they would have really uh, taken on board the lessons especially about the Highlanders uh, very lethal counter-attacking play um, and they didn't really um, as, as Garen will testify they, uh, the Sharks exit strategy was a little bit dodgy at times some of their, their uh, kick clearances were, went a little bit too sort of infield which allowed the Highlanders to sort of uh, you know get beautiful um, counter-attacking thrust through through centre field, where someone like Malakai Fekatoa obviously comes very strongly into the equation, and and certainly proved quite a handful for for his opposite number, J.P. Peterson, who, as we know, is the, still the contentious issue of is he really suited to that centre berth or should he be playing on the wing? So there were plenty of bothersome moments for the Sharks. The happy thing for me was that um, I thought when it really mattered in the last few minutes, the Sharks actually played their best, if you like, sort of most sensible knockout rugby. Mm -hmm. uh, they got onto the front foot uh, and they closed out the game really clinically and uh, yes they had some rocky moments but there were also a couple of occasions where you know they came within a whisker of, of other tries. Yanni Duplessis of course was uh, found uh, guilty of a double movement wasn't he in, uh, as he came within a whisker of a sort of what would have been a sort of historic try for him. Uh, tight head props don't score tries too often um, and in the end it was it was ruled out. Uh, Jean Dacel I think Aaron, uh, knocked the ball on didn't he as he went over the line on another occasion. So you know as much as the Highlanders uh, um, produced lots of thrust and, and, and the, the try count was three all. Mm -hmm. um, the Sharks did have other opportunities where they might have, have made things more easy for themselves. And there will just be great relief in Durban that they've actually gone through.